One question that's been rattling the greatest minds across the globe is how did it all begin? The universe is massive, its expanse is incomprehensible and we've just touched the tip of the iceberg. But through the things that we have come to notice, the beginning of all things has been a varied, seemingly unanswered question. Sure, the Big Bang Theory has given us some certainty, but did it really happen? Scientists are now arguing with the very existence of a theory that we've all learned in school. With the James Webb Space Telescope working in full throttle, images of the earliest times might prove that we've been wrong all this while. Or are we? Before we dive in, let's recheck what we've come to know about the Big Bang. To be really honest, the Big Bang is actually quite a misleading name for the expanding universe that we see. We see an infinite universe expanding into itself. The name Big Bang identifies the idea of an explosion at one time and place with a center. The universe doesn't really have a center, which is why the name is pretty misleading. The Big Bang was a process that happened everywhere at once over a great amount of time and not at one specific point in time. We know this because we see galaxies rushing away from each other, not from a central point. And we see the heat that was left over from early times and that heat uniformly fills the universe. When looking closely at the cosmos, we can see the heat that was there around 380,000 years ago after the expansion of the universe that began 13.8 billion years ago, which is what we refer to as the Big Bang. This heat covers the entire sky and fills the universe, and to this day, in fact, it still does. Scientists were able to map it with satellites NASA and ESA built, called the Cosmic Background Explorer, or COBE, the Wilkinson Microwave Anistrophy Probe, or WMAP, and Planck. The universe at this point was extremely smooth, with only tiny ripples in temperature. Alright, since we kind of understood the matter, let's talk about what's really happening out there. Now, the so-called science behind the Big Bang isn't nearly as prominent as most people would believe. Many scientists, even atheistic, naturalistic ones, know there are big problems with the now fundamental idea of the Big Bang. What gives the Big Bang its fair share of issues comes from the previous images from the James Webb Space Telescope, which haven't helped those in favour of the Big Bang. Although there are many who refute the idea of the Big Bang, the majority of the scientific community have sided with it, ever since it was first pointed out by Georges Lemaitre nearly a century ago. No one really expected that the James Webb Space Telescope would contribute to the debate. Painting a separate, different picture is physicist Eric J. Lerner, the author of a book called The Big Bang Never Happened, published in 1992, and his argument speaks for itself. While this makes him an interested party, it doesn't make him entirely wrong. In a long-winded explanation, Lerner writes, to everyone who sees them, the new James Webb Space Telescope images of the cosmos are beautifully awe-inspiring. But to most professional astronomers and cosmologists, they are also astounding, not at all what was predicted by theory. The images show surprisingly many galaxies, galaxies that are surprisingly smooth, surprisingly small and surprisingly old. Lots of surprises, and not necessarily pleasant ones. Of course, this doesn't mean that the Big Bang is obsolete or that physicists and astronomers are suddenly becoming creationists. Many will disagree with the interpretation of the data and come up with better methods to justify the Big Bang theory. The problem is that it does show that the data doesn't match with what's predicted if the Big Bang happened, Lerner further explains. Why do the JWST's images inspire panic among cosmologists? And what theories' predictions are they contradicting? The paper doesn't actually say. The truth that these papers don't report is that the hypotheses that the JWST's images are blatantly and repeatedly contradicting is the Big Bang hypotheses, that the universe began 14 billion years ago in an incredibly hot, dense state and has been expanding ever since. Since that hypothesis has been defended for decades as unquestionable truth by the vast majority of cosmological theorists, the new data is causing these theorists to panic. So wait, does that mean the knowledge that we've been taught was wrong? Well, like most other things about the cosmos, the answer isn't as picturesque as it seems. 
We've known that the images from the James Webb Space Telescope have impressed people across the globe, like that of SMAC's 0723 Galaxy Cluster, which was first released on July the 11th. For astronomy, the images and data gathered by the JWST are like a treasure chest, from which astronomers and astrophysicists expect to reap many benefits for many years to come. It really won't be surprising if you come across more reports claiming to have discovered something incredible. The issue here is that not all reports based on the telescope's findings are equally credible. Many people on the internet are confused by Eric J. Lerner's claim that the JWST data shows that the Big Bang did not happen. Lerner has written a few hundred articles as a writer, and he is also a scientist of good repute. He is a proponent of a universe that is static and immortal, and which in turn invites the intervention of a divine creator, which might get a lot of people thinking. Like Lerner, there have been several others who have dabbled in the theory that the universe is static, such as Fred Hoyle, the astrophysicist famous for explaining how fusion reactions in stars create chemical elements. And Hans Alfven, whose pioneering work in magnetohydrodynamics won him the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1970. However, is that theory really true? The universe evolved from a super hot, super dense state to its current form, according to the Big Bang model. The volume of experimental evidence for this idea has grown since the 1960s, and one particularly important piece is the cosmic microwave background, resulting in Hoyle's steady state theory, Alvin's model, and other similar models which have faded away from the scientific discourse. A vast majority of scientists that believe in the Big Bang Theory were quick to rebut learners' claims in The Big Bang Never Happened. The negative feedback and derision hasn't stopped Lerner from continually publishing his views. His articles also have a fair share of inconsistencies. In the previously mentioned Lerner's article, he claimed that the galaxies the telescope had observed were too smooth, too old, too small to allow for the Big Bang. He also contended that the universe appears to have had too many disk galaxies when it was 400 million years old. Many physicists call his extrapolation opportunistic because his arguments are pointed at a galaxy formation theory and not the Big Bang model. That's an insult that flew straight over my head. The Big Bang model as we know it today was born out of the mathematics in the general theory of relativity as it pertains to the early universe. Stephen Hawking was the first to show this in his PhD thesis published in 1966. So, to deny the Big Bang is, in the absence of extraordinary evidence, to effectively deny the universe's evolution. The Big Bang hypothesis has been able to survive several cosmological tests because it is able to account for multiple observations without simultaneously denying others. Even though we can't point to it with 100% accuracy, studies show that the Big Bang theory is the best explanation we have for how the universe began. There are many, like Lerner, who believe differently and many who believe in a static universe, but that theory might not be completely false. With the sheer effort of scientists, astronomers and researchers all around the world, we're pretty sure to get to the bottom of this very soon. Until then, the theory that's been running science class for the past 50 years is still pretty solid. So what do you think? What is your take on what actually happened? And what further revelations are we going to find about the formation of the universe? Let us know in the comments below and, as always, thanks for watching Space Age.